everyone, something different. I'm going to sandblast this glass before I hand engrave it and I'll show you very briefly how I do it. I use a Coral Draw drawing program, absolutely brilliant. And this is some very good acetate which I will be printing my artwork onto. You can see I've already done some artwork and I'm now working out the curve of the glass to make sure. You can see how the straight artwood would artwork would bend so I am going to put this on a curve so that it fits and looks straight. I use an envelope for this what they call envelope and it's all I'm going to do is just bring down the lettering to the right curve of the glass so that it it fits correctly and when you put it on it appears more straight now obviously this lettering is a bit wonky so you really can't really tell whether it's straight or not but I can if it was straight lettering um, on, a, on a flat line you would notice it more significantly I use a very strong print because you don't want the uh, light to come through the print um, because this is going to go into an ultraviolet light box here I have done the printing on the acetate and you can see it sits nicely along the straight line. This is now going to go into the ultraviolet light box um, between the light and a special film which is an APM plus. Just the way it is the, 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 the artwork needs to go upside down onto the film. It is a light sensitive film of course and this is going to cook as I say for a mere 20 seconds. This will count it down for me nicely and then it will it's hard in the background so that where the, the artwork was uh, is nice and soft and can easily be washed out with water in, in my washing cabinet. This is a dryer, obviously a bit extravagant for one tiny little piece of uh, uh, film. Quite often I'll just use a hairdryer for it. Um, I have now measured, stuck and stuck uh, tape on the background and sandblasted. I needed three hands in order to film this, so um, <laughs> you missed that little bit. And I've sand, uh, sandblasted relatively deeply, not too deeply because this is, a, is not a thick glass. But you can see the edges, you can actually put your nail into it. Um, and now I will be washing the tapes off. Again, I need three hands to show you, but anyway, <laughs> you get the idea need to be an octopus for this job right you can you can see quite clearly that's all been cleaned up and um, there was actually a tiny little mark now there must have been a little bubble I missed and I got a little bit heavy-handed and it went through to the glass so as I normally do if there is something like that um, if it's not too deep I can polish it out with my big polishes but in this case it was slightly deeper so um, what do you do put an acacia tree over the top uh, my theme is a gorilla so we are talking Africa so we are talking pretty much a, a, an indigenous tree very recognizable for Africa just a very simple impression of it in the gap at the bottom on the front because of course the gorilla I am going to engrave on the back of the glass so that you see it nicely through the glass. I have speeded up the um, film as usual and obviously this is going pretty fast. I'm using a little diamond here, lots of water and just pretty much sketching in the shape of the tree and a few leaves. The impression of leaves. Obviously you're not going to be able to uh, engrave each leaf. Here I've got a white Arkansas again and I'm adding in some quick little half tones. Obviously the different shades of 
the leaves going on there. Just freehand. And then taking up the, taking it up the edges of the trunk and the branches. Adding a little bit of half tone and of course if there are any rough edges to it they will be obliterated by the white or Kansas. Later on you will see that I decide to put a tree on the other side as well because that is a bit of a gap there. I thought that it might look okay just with the one side um, but it didn't. Anyway here I have got uh, a little brown rubber which I'm adding in some shading. I've got a picture of a gorilla which I am going to pick up the main features of. I'm sticking it with white tack onto the inside of the glass, ensuring that I have centered it to the lettering in the front so that when you look from the front, it all hangs nicely together. You can see I've, I've or you might be able to see, I've got a little black mark front and back, middle front and middle back. Just setting my, my little stand up nicely so that I can get to the engraving comfortably. So I've just stuck um, something underneath to lift it up a bit there. Right, a tiny little diamond burr and I start to engrave um, the features. And anything that I see, white. As you know, we are engraving the white. In something like this, obviously I am uh, surface engraving, I will not be going deep at all because the glass is fine, it is not thick and, and so therefore um, keeping all the engraving to the surface. I always say you press about as hard as if you're using a ballpoint pen, um, that's about right I think. A ballpoint pen these days is not like the old days. I can remember ballpoint pens at school were terrible things. Anyway, moving along, getting in some of the features. I think I have upped the size of my burr ever so slightly. Just go with the size that is comfortable with the features you're working on. This kind of artwork is very easy. Now obviously I'm not impressed with the quality of that burr. It must be an older burr and I'm wanting something much sharper. High speed engraving as always. Very simple to do this kind of engraving. You could say it's cheating, but as I said, as I've said before, my my art teacher, or well, about a hundred years ago, used to teach us that there's no such thing as cheating in art. <laughs> I'll never forget that. I think there is actually. You can go you can go a little bit too far sometimes. But for something like this, I would rather um, show you how this is done. This um, is a gift I engraved for a very dear friend of ours who is um, from Kenya.
Right. I think I have got here a uh, green stone, a small green stone. I think I can't see on my screen, actually. It's a bit small. When I'm editing, it's, it's a smaller screen, but I am guessing. What do I say? Might be a diamond. No. Bit embarrassing that I can't see what it is as I am talking to you. <laughs> oh, dear. Right, very large diamond. That must that might have been a diamond actually. This is a, a very large diamond. Um, again, we're still picking up all the highlights, and there are areas that are quite light. And because this is skimming over the surface of what, um, although I haven't gone deep with the smaller diamond, I have gone slightly deeper than what I will be doing with this burr, and therefore it's it's just skimming over. Um, and there will still be some textures from the fine diamond work underneath. We are definitely painting with diamonds, can you tell? It's like having a palette next to me with all the different burrs. You don't want to get too heavy handed with the large burr at this stage. Um, you can always add highlights later on, but we're just getting in the main, the main colors, if you like. Back and forth, back and forth with all the different burrs, back to a very, very tiny uh, diamond. That looks like it could be a rat's tail. Again, I'm not able to see. My screen is just not showing me properly. Um, but whatever you feel you need, I mean, you could be engraving um, a bird or, or any other animal. This, the process is, is quite simple if you're doing this sort of engraving. I am normally obviously really careful of, of coffee, copyright. Uh, this is for a friend. I am not selling this piece. I didn't sell this piece. It is literally something fun for a friend. Right, that's all the basics done. Uh, what have I got there? I've got a little, um, a, a little um, brush. Uh, that's just um, brushed out some of the the diamond that sometimes you get a bit of diamond stuck in and you want to be able to see it clearly and it just a bit of the dust is stuck into the the engraving so I've just rubbed it out um, so we've got the basics of our gorilla going on here keeping my picture as a reference to roughly follow. Yeah, I have got a pink stone burr, which quite often, I, I, I mean, quite honestly, I don't often use it, but it is a, an interesting half tone. Um, it has a bit of light and dark. It has almost speckles in it. I used to uh, use it if I was doing hair. Um, it is, it's an interesting little stone. Uh, you can use any stone really for this as long as it's not too uh, abrasive because we're doing pretty much a half tone here. This is a sketch. Um, so like any uh, sketch, just go for it. As you know, I don't want to see any white, not white, what am I talking about? Put my teeth back in. I don't want to see any clear glass. Um, and so I will be filling in all clear areas with um, this or the white Arkansas later on, and then, then polishing 
but I, I don't want to see what effectively looks like a hole in the glass. It all needs to be engraved. You can see I'm turning and working roughly in the direction of the hair sometimes. Um, not that it's absolutely necessary at this stage. I'm pressing very lightly. I am not going deep at all. I am only picking up the upper surface. So here I've got uh, a small white Arkansas and I am going over um, the areas where I see that it will ultimately be pretty dark. Um, and this tool, as you know, is a wonderful pre-polishing tool. It will smooth out that area quite considerably um, so that when you actually polish it, it becomes really nice and clear and dark. I have got my grey rubber here, um, as I say you can use any rubber and I am now picking up some of the uh, ridges as shadow. So I'm just running it over the top and whatever areas that are engraved into the glass lightly, because I'm only pressing lightly, it will not go into those areas and therefore only the upper surface will be polished creating the shadows this being the first little bit of shading work uh, as you know shading and highlighting and shading and more details and going back and shading you, you go back and forth and back and forth uh, doesn't matter how many times you're just working into it like a painting I do like the effect of sketching as though you picked up a pencil and, and drawn this you know quite speedily on a piece of paper I do like that effect this is uh, a nice rubber disc which will again pick up the upper surfaces which we want to be the darkest areas and making them even darker than what the um, slightly softer rubber my grey rubber would have done going in the direction of the hair um, and it virtually, um, while it's picking up the ridges, it virtually makes its own hair effect anyway. So there's so many elements going on with this technique. So many effects. Right, I think this is a little diamond by the looks of things. I've got this problem again where I can't see properly from. <laughs> it looks like I'm highlighting. Once I get it on the bigger screen, then I'll be able to see it properly and then it'll be too late. So I'm not very, I'm not being very efficient in today. I think because I haven't shown it closely to the camera. I wasn't really intending... Um, filming this particular piece and then I thought well I'm doing it I might as well film it and this was a while ago and so um, long before lockdown and I'm glad I did film it 
Um, although the sandblasting part obviously was very, very brief, very basic. I will do a proper one. Um, it'll be worthwhile you seeing it properly from start to finish because, um, you know, there's there's various elements of just the mask itself where you have an upper film and a, an under film that both have got to be removed, in fact, before you even get to sticking it on the glass. It's quite interesting. Right, we're starting to look a bit more real now. Right, what have I got here? Oh, I've got a, a small brown rubber flattening the top because I want that sharpness. I'm not sure where I'm polishing. Where am I polishing? The eyes. Okay. To get those sharp little lines, I flatten the top and it does help. It's far more efficient. I seem to have gone for another cup of tea. Back to the tiny diamond and adding highlights and whatever I see on the picture, adding them into the the eyes. They don't really have whites of their eyes. They have pretty grungy eyes. <laughs> they definitely look like they need eye drops most of the time. Back to that little diamond again. Gosh, I think it's a diamond. Oh my word. And the rubber. Actually, that might have been the white, Arcan white Arkansas, my goodness gracious me. <laughs> oh dear. Maybe I'll be able to write it on the screen. Ah, this is an old rat's tail by the looks of things, and I am flattening the top of it so that I get down to the nice fresh diamonds. Just using a stone in the drill. Oh, don't know what happened there. Changed my mind and went back to the rubber. I might have done this differently had I re had I planned to film it for you guys uh, properly. This is where I had actually held it up and had a look at it and thought, mm, you know what, we need to balance out the front with that space there. Um, because of the shape of his body, um, there was definitely a gap on the size, side when you looked from the front to the back. So I'm just freehanding another 
um, little acacia tree so that it um, balances up. Now bearing in mind I would have um, roughly measured the area, made sure that I put it um, in you know, the same distance from the middle, getting the same level um, so that it doesn't look wonky. So um, there would have been, a, a, I would have used a black marker or something like that. Tiny little details being popped in there. Uh, this looks like a little uh, rat's tail. It's that burr again. Right, the rubber. Getting some half tones in. Kind of looking across to the other side, thinking, mm, "Do they look? Do they look the same?" Because quite often, <laughs> you've done the, a certain process on the one side and. You've got to try and remember how you've done it if you do want it to look exactly the same. Um, this looks like a little diamond, which I'm putting some highlights onto the top of the tree. Lots and lots of lovely sunshine. Little White Arkansas adding some uh, half tones and of course neatening up and half toning in the tree itself. Right, this is a slightly different white Arkansas, flattening the top a little bit so I can get a sharp uh, line when held on its side. Well, held normally if you like. <laughs> and this will add some half tone hairs. It literally will cut in beautifully into the glass. So creating their own little half tone um, elements. Yes, you could have done this at an earlier stage. You can use this at any point. You can start with, with the half-tone hairs, if you like. It it doesn't really matter. It's just a case of working back and forth and back and forth. Now, you can see this will um, neaten up the, the rest of the hair, uh, especially on the edges. Um, I like a, a softer um, outer edge of the animal hair. And I'm actually stroking it backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards as well. That kind of blends it in better. The side I'm working on now, I think... What's that side? It's a big shoulder area. Well, it might have been the other side that I decided later on I really needed to make a bit thicker, wider, and, and I did do that. This chap has got quite a, a fancy hairdo. And there again you see I'm, I'm flicking out some tiny little half-tone hairs at the top. It does make a big difference. It really does make it look quite 3D. It's 
It's amazing how this burr will cut into the glass nicely. Right, back to my brown rubber, oh, brown rubber, grey rubber. And uh, just flicking over the top again. Um, blending with more half tone effect. Especially as I have just used a white Arkansas, it will um, pick up bits of that, darken it in places, blend, blend, blend. Yeah, it's this side. You can see how he just needed a little bit more back end to him. You can see his shoulder looks a little bit odd. It, it, it does look odd in the picture, but I eventually add more to the back there, bringing it down um, probably about half a, centi half a centimeter wider. And it just finished it off nicely. You might be able to see it um, on the poster image. Yes, Les, I'm having a peep at the camera there, <laughs> making sure I'm, I haven't got my fat head in the way. Back to more highlights. This will be a um, rat's tail again. Fantastic little boo. Although I think I say that about all the burrs, don't I? They are. You'll notice that I'm not just leaving the, the glass lying flat in there. I am moving it around a bit. Um... Because this is so freehand, um, I'm not doing anything precise. And uh, for this purpose, I've actually just picked it up slightly and so I can move it around. Because also, you're trying to get a particular action going. And sometimes you don't want to feel awkward. So if it means being more comfortable with the, with the stroke... Then pick up the glass, turn the glass. So what otherwise would have, you know, when you think of a surface engraving, you would think it's quite simple and quick and easy, but in actual fact, there is an awful lot of work, an awful lot of fiddling about and um, to get a, a the required finish. It's quite often if you view it from the other side and even upside down. That's what we used to do in, in art class at school. <laughs> you turn your picture upside down. Uh, but in, with the glass, of course, we've got the opportunity to look through the glass at it. And that, again, gives it a different perspective. And quite often you will see where something might have been thrown out of sync. Um, and you will notice maybe that um, an eye or an ear is not quite right. Um, and you can fix it. So now comes to the nitty gritty of making sure I have got the the finest, most important details correct.
Here I've got the white or canvas again working into the eye. The eyes are so important. Little brown rubber to get some nice dark areas. Nope. <laughs> Back to the rubber. I should actually edit these fiddly faffy bits out. <laughs> uh. But it's quite interesting to see how, you know, it's not a quick job. These things take time. Little white Arkansas, I have noticed that there is a half tone above the nostril. Or just in, I don't know, I can't really see clearly as I say from here. I think it was just inside the top area. Probably as it turns in wood. Guaranteed when when I'm finished anything, I stand back and look at it. And certainly if I take a photograph, I will see things that I would like to fix. Especially a photograph that is a large photograph with lots of detail. Righty ho, last few bits and pieces. Ah, of course, as always, your signature and the date. Somewhere nice. Um, I don't always sign underneath the artwork. I sometimes sign on the base or on the side of the bowl, but uh, in this case, I have decided to sign the actual sketch. Couple more details on the ear. Haven't really uh, tended to do much to the ear since since our very initial bit of engraving. Oh, the white on Kansas and now a little brown rubber again. I did think there were a few more dark areas um, on his upper lip and so what I'm doing is a couple of lighter touches to it so that when I rubber I put the rubber over it now it um, will be instantly dark darker 
as I say, white off hands is pre-polishing, meaning that your rubber will produce a darker effect. And there you have it. As I say, I did make those, that shoulder wider, but there is the Gorilla Sokwe. Hope you enjoyed that. Do have a go. Until next time. Thanks, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.